You're watching the free version of Mocha Essentials. Follow along with projects and footage with a premium download available at borisfx.com. Both Mocha Pro and Mocha AE contain the Just Track module, which provides users with a second level of keyframe control to fix tracks that drift. Here you can find the Just Track interface and controls. And here we have the classic Adjust Track interface from older version of Mocha. The Adjust Track module was redesigned to give flexibility for different tracking solutions. Before the deep dive, let's quickly go over the basics and remember how the tool works. Here we have a shot with a little bit of drift in it. You may not even see it before I zoom in and turn on the stabilization. Now you should see it better. Corners of the surface slowly drifts over the time. That would be very easy to fix. First, I need to find the frame where the surface is aligned the most. Starting from here, we can jump into a Just Track module. Each checkbox sets different number of points depending on your needs. Only one reference point is needed to adjust the translation, two points to control scale and rotation, three to adjust the shear, and, by choosing perspective, four points would be created, allowing you to make full corner pin style correction. You also can create as many additional reference points as you need. We'll be touching this in more details later in the video. You can hold Shift key to select multiple points and move them together, or click and hold right mouse button to move all available points. To perform the adjustment, we need to follow the basic principles of animation. You don't have to do adjustments every couple of frames. Mocha has already did the most of the job for us, we only need to fine-tune it. Scrub through the timeline forwards and backwards and find the frames where the surface is misaligned the most. This is the right moments where the points need to be adjusted. You can select the desired point by clicking on Select button and the point would be highlighted. You also have the small zone window top left to compare the current frame point position to the reference frame. To align the points, use notch keys either the auto notch or the arrow keys. Align all the points as needed, then scrub through and find another frame that requires correction. You also can move the points manually. Use whatever works best for you. By going through the timeline like this, you can get a good result really quickly. If you want to automate this process even more, you can try enabling auto step. The default value is 10, which means Mocha will auto notch all the points every 10 frames. To execute that, just click notch forwards or backwards. That just literally took one second. Then repeat it backwards. And we're done. After you've finished, you can export track data to your host the same way as you normally would. Now we can turn something regular into something that is not. With knowing how to use the tool, you can fix most of the drifts in a fast and efficient way. However, since the Just Track Transform was first introduced, some users have been confused by the keyframing behavior that didn't work the same as classic mode. For example, if one of your reference points goes out of frame or becomes obscured, you can run into issue depending on the keyframe state, meaning the reference point is off-screen and is no longer useful to help align the track. Based on user requests, we've improved the workflow that makes the keyframing of reference points much more intentional. Here we have added a keyframe all points checkbox. This is a small yet powerful improvement, and understanding the workflow is key to mastering a just track. The default behavior is on, so whenever you move a point, you add in a keyframe to all of the reference points. You can open a dope sheet and you'll see that keyframes for all of the points were created automatically. But when the checkbox is off, keyframes would only be created for the points that you've adjusted. Let me show when it might be helpful on a more complex example. This shot is awesome for showing you new adjust track feature. It has a couple of challenges we have to deal with. Let's play it back and see what we have. The car is pretty well seen at the beginning, but the closer it gets to the camera, the more motion blur starts to affect our image. We also lose a huge part of the trackable area because the car is going out of screen. At one point, the motion is so dramatic that planner tracker would start to struggle. Step 1. The base track. 
I was able to track most of the range with the full perspective check, but around this area, when we started to lose our corners, I switched to translation scale and rotation, and at the very end, I just had to switch to translation only. And here's what we have. But don't worry, we would be able to fix this. Now it's time for a just track. Step 2. Choosing the reference frame. In order to fix this track, first, we need to find a good frame for setting up our reference points. I need to be able to see all of my four corners, and ideally, there shouldn't be a lot of motion blur. Frame number 55 looks like a good start. I switch to adjust track tab and set up four reference points. Now I can scrap back to the beginning of the footage and adjust the drift without any problems, either by using the nudge keys or manually. Great. Then I scrap forwards, looking for the next spot that requires correction. And here's where we're starting to get a problem. We have some noticeable drift that we would like to fix, but two of our reference points are no longer visible in the frame. In some cases, you may just position them blindly and that will work out for you. But for this shot, this technique is probably not gonna be the best, because soon we would also lose two of our front points, making it hard to align the surface in a consistent way. So if you wanna be pixel perfect, there is a better solution. Instead of using these two back points that we can't see anymore, we can create two new reference points that we will use to correct the drift further in the shot. However, it is important to understand where and when to place them. Step 3. Adding new points and why do we want keyframe all points disabled? Each point has what is called effective keyframe range, in other words, the lifespan. It's basically a range between the very first and the very last point's keyframes. The points adjustments are only valid within the range of that keyframes meaning points do not contribute to an adjustment outside of their keyframe range. Ok, but what does it mean for us, in case we want to add a few more points? Try imagining two timelines, where the first would represent the keyframes for the point that goes off screen, and the second one for the point that you want to use as a replacement for the first one. In order to successfully switch from one point to another, their effective keyframe ranges should overlap, at least for one frame. Otherwise, things just might not work correctly. Now you should see why you may want to disable that keyframe all points checkbox. By turning it off, we can no longer care about the points that goes off screen. But before disabling it, let's first set up a key on the very last frame where the back points are still visible. That will define the end frame for their lifespan. Ok, now we are ready for setting up new points. Ideally, we should place them on the features that are gonna be visible till the end of the shot, or at least for some significant amount of time. Thankfully, we have those. Although we can create new points on exact same frame, it looks a bit blurry for me. So I scrap backwards a couple of frames, till I can see the details more clearly. I zoom in for a better view and click on Add New Point button. We have one great feature for placing a point down here, and I need one more here at the top. I can play with the viewer's brightness and gamma a bit to see the details better. Now I would place one more point here at the top, kinda in line with these dots. Alright, for the simplicity of explanation, now I would just call them front, middle and back points. When working on a complex shot like this, I prefer to focus my attention only on one point at a time. Middle points are gonna be visible through the most of the range, so let's first adjust one of them. By having a point selected and looking at the small zoom window, I can clearly see where the shift is happening. To fix this, first thing I would do, I would make sure that this point is aligned properly on the frame where the back point's lifespan ends. Looks fine, but could be better, so I hit out a notch. Nice. Before making any further adjustments, this is the right moment to disable keyframe all points checkbox. Now I can control each point individually without worrying that the off-screen points will somehow affect my track. Step 4. Single point correction. I slowly scrub forwards and whenever I see a drift, I just hit auto notch one frame before the shift is happening to make a keyframe, and then auto again on the frame with the shift itself. And voila, the point is back in place. Turning the stabilization on would make this process even easier. 
When I reach to the point where the motion blur becomes so heavy, I would have to position my points manually. I adjust the viewer's brightness again to see the feature better. Whenever the feature is in motion blur, we need to position the point right in the middle of the blurred area. Luckily, we have to do this only for a couple of frames at the end. And here we lose it. Till this frame, I was able to get a pretty smooth result. Let's check what's happening with the upper point. The process would be the same. I scrub forwards, find the drift and nudge as needed. I must say again that this is rather a complex shot and the motion blur is pretty tangible here. Most of the regular shots are gonna be piece of a cake for Mocha, so you won't have to do so many manual corrections. But nevertheless, I'm showing you the technique on this clip so that you'd be prepared for any situation. I continue to align the upper point as long as it remains visible. Let's check how the surface looks so far. Looks a bit weird, isn't it? The reason why surface is rotating is because we've made the keyframes only for the two of the middle points. And as you remember, two points controls scale and rotation. But now when we have them rock solid in place, we can rely on them. So any further adjustments would be quite simple. The next step would be setting up a keys for the front points. I would speed up this part, cause the process is literally the same. I used auto notch here and there as needed, and only a couple of frames at the end required some manual correction. The front point's lifespan ends up on frame 84, and till that frame we are able to get a pretty accurate result. Let's pause here for a moment. Having reached to this point, you should already have an understanding why you may want to add new points, how to create them, and how to replace one with another. If you're working on an average shot where you're losing just one or two points, you should be good to go, so you probably can skip the next section. However, the particular shot I'm working on is a bit tricky, so if you want to see how I handled it, or if you're working on something similar, stick with me till the end. So what is the deal? We had a section where two of the four points obviously become unavailable, and we've already fixed that part by adding two more points and using them instead. But the trick is, the track is moving on, and the rear side become visible again, also bringing in the related points back on screen. This is where a mistake may happen. Step 5. The final adjustment. So we still have this rotation at the end. It may be very tempting now to just grab these two back points again and align the surface. And it may look like the job is done. But in reality, if I scrub backwards, look what happened. The surface is not aligned anymore. That's because by moving back points again, we've extended their lifespan. And that bring it in some interpolation that we didn't want it. And yeah, you may try realign it again, but that would be a waste of time, and I didn't want to do the same job twice. So what I did instead? Let me first undo the changes for the back points. Okay. I went back to the very last frame, where I'm still satisfied how the surface looks. We basically have no clear features where we potentially could add more points. Yet I know that I need a few more to correct the surface at the end of the shot. So I had to cheat a little bit. So what I did? I created two new reference points right in the corners of the surface. Despite the fact that I don't really see the image here, I know that this is the right spot for placing the points, because we've already fixed the surface on this frame. Now I can use these two new points without worrying that it will affect my previous result. You see, it remains fine. I continue to use these new points as I normally would. The process may look a bit confusing. But as you use the adjust track more, the concept should click in your mind and work like a charm. At the very end, we only have one point available. When we reach to the point where the object is going to leave the frame completely, we have no other option than just eyeball the surface. And it's fine to align it like this here, cause most of the surface is already out of frame anyway, so any slight misalignments won't be as noticeable. Let's check what we have. You can render the result through the insert with the motion blur to make it look even more natural. Finally, here's the version with the replaced logo. You've been watching the free version of Mocha Essentials. To download all videos, projects and footage, purchase the premium version available at borisfx.com.